Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thanks for joining us this morning. Woo-hoo, you're on early, Rondell. Good gracious. Pop, 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 pop. I am rocking and rolling, y'all. Throw me some peanut butter on a piece of bread. You do this, girl, Mickey. Oh, yeah. We're being snidely this morning. Good morning, author Lynette M. Jewel. You never did tell us the name of your book, my dear. You don't know the name of her book. We don't know the name of your book. Lynette, what's the name of your book? Not know the name of your book. We need to know. Inquiring minds need to know. We got a special guest in the second half of this morning's show. I cannot wait. Um, you're gonna have to pronounce his last name for me again. Joseph Pridgen. Pridgen. <laughs> Joseph Pridgen. And I'm very excited about Joseph Pridgen being on the show today. I hear you just say Ron Paulin was on. Yeah, Ron is already out well, here. Ron, your buddy Joseph will be here at 8.30. Is that Joseph in the green room? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Silence these things. is 8.59. We're about to get online. Good morning, Bethany, a.k.a. Brennan's mom. That's the founder is. of the hashtag Rucker Report. The Rucker Report. The Rucker Report. What's that? That Joe's number. I don't want to speak about the Rucker. You know, I got to speak about the Rucker. <laughs> Take a moment to share. We're going to go ahead and. Get... Been, how many times have you heard yes. references to the, um, the Rucker Park in New York, up in Manhattan, Rucker Park? But it's spelled different. No, it's not. Rucker Park. M is R U T G E R. No, it's not. That's Rutgers. That's Rutgers University. You're thinking of it's Rucker Park. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, about that. Good morning, Queens and Kings, Lisa and Brian. Y'all looking fabulous. Good morning. My name is Brian McNeil. And I am Lisa Santiago McNeil. Thank you for joining us on our show. Let's talk about it. We come to each Monday through Friday right here on the SIBN Network on iHeartRadio, YouTube, tune in, as well as Facebook Live. Good morning. Hey. And you can always catch us afterwards on the podcast, on your favorite podcasting station. Just look up Let's Talk About It. That's the name of the podcast. Author Lynette, Lynette M. Jewell's book is called I Am a... I am a survivor. I just learned this yesterday. I'm a survivor. I'm not in this way, or y'all can't hear me. That's right. It's called I am a survivor, and you can get it at I am a survivor book dot com forward slash Lynette dash Jewel. There you go. Um, author Lynette said, "Lisa, that's peach fudge. Peach fudge is on his." Hey, I shaved it all off Sunday. You know, this is what today's Wednesday now, right? Yeah, Bethany. Well, Sunday night, actually, before I went to bed. It was before he went to bed because I didn't know anything about it. Woke up the next day, didn't know anything about it. Yeah, I got some peach fuzz, and I'm going to let it go. I'm probably have to shape it sometime this week. Um, Bethany's on West Coast time, so I'm about to start reading Think and Grow Rich. I've never heard of the park. <sighs> Rucker Park, made famous by Earl Manigo. All the greats played outdoor ball there. It was bigger in the 70s and 80s than it is today, but it's still legendary. They have a tournament. It's really a tournament that they have at the park. Are you reading Think and Grow Rich with Evans Group? I think they're doing uh, uh, Dennis Kimbrough. Black Choice by yeah, Dennis Kimbrough. They're doing Dennis Kimbrough's version, mm -hmm. which is awesome. I've read it three we times. both, actually. Yeah, I've read Dennis Kimbrough's book three times. I've read Think and Grow Rich probably 10 times. Yeah, I thought I took that up last night. But anyway, not. here we are Wednesday morning. Wednesday is hump day. Uh, middle of the week. I also consider Together. Wednesdays uh, evaluation day. How's your week going so far? Oh, evaluation day. I don't know how it's going. Day. I think it's going good. Okay. We've had at least two winning days this week. 
Um, one of the things I'm gonna shoot, that's my articles about um, in the empowerment uh, magazine. And, oh, wow. We have got some great contributions so far. We've got some heart contributions. We've got some, first, please. So the empowerment magazine is a magazine for you by you. Right. So it is about sharing stories of overcoming self-help, personal development um, and such a way that you're not just hearing my voice or Brian's voice. We have amazing contributors. I think we have 10 or 12 contributors. We've got one all the way from uh, from Africa. Uh, his name is Sunday Gino, Gino, and he contributed about his journey to become a uh, leadership coach. And yeah. there's just so much in there. There's so I wanted to show how it ties us together. How many articles do you think you're going to have in this edition? So in this edition, there should be 10 or 12. 10 or 12 thought leaders. Right. 10 or 12 thought leaders sharing some good stuff that was either going to be interesting or helpful. Right? Absolutely. Interesting or helpful, or, helpful. <laughs> or both. And an opportunity to share your businesses on those pages so the people who come. Now, it is a magazine. It's an online magazine. Mm -hmm. um, and it is in blog format. So you can go through and find which one of those bloggers you actually want to follow consistently. It's awesome. And I'm looking forward to it. It's a relaunch, really, of a magazine that we've launched a couple of times before, but this time even better. Now, one of the uh, contributors actually decided to do a ref a review, um, a book review. Okay, cool. And she chose your book. Which one? Unsolicited. Which one? Asking for the money. Wonderful, wonderful. So good. I need reviews on that book. <laughs> Asking for the money by Brian K. McNeil. You can get it on Amazon, but I need some more reviews on that book. I'm very proud of the books I put together. So any of my books would be fine with me. Um, I love my first book, The Shortcut, um, The Fastest Route to Selling Your Services. And the book that she chose, unsolicited, was my second book called Asking for the Money, How Anyone Can Overcome More Objection, Overcome More Close more sales, even you. Anyone close more sales, even you. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Wednesday, Sister Melissa Price. And author Lynette says, yeah, yeah, it's humpback day. Humpback day. Sister Dorothea, how you been, my sister? Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Y'all know the song, the show. Welcome back, Carter. You old enough. Now, Bethany is reading with the NBWS group. So mm -hmm. that's awesome. He yeah. is actually going to be. Um, In addition, 12 now, I saw. That's awesome. Episode 12 or something like that. Episode number 12. And you'll soon be able to get that on a podcast because I'm working with Evan today. Evan's excited about that, actually. I talked to Evan. Did you? Mm -hmm. sure Talking behind my back about stuff. Well, first off, whose friend was he first? Your Mine. You sure? I'm positive. Okay. Good morning, Radley. How you doing? <laughs> Because Lisa borrowed a lot, my friend. I did not. I was at 5,000 Facebook friends. She was like around 2,500. Not even. Not even 2,500. Not even. So my friends became her friends. <laughs> <laughs> now you're at what? 49. 49? Mm -hmm. You almost said mm -hmm. five? Yeah. Yep. What you gonna do when you get the fire? Go open up a second page? Well, no, I have a fan page, and it's actually I'm supposed to be um putting it. That's what's up. Red is just getting off set. Go diva. That's right. Go she diva. went with, um. What show was she on today? WCNC. What's the, what's the name of the show? She was on a show today. Oh man. Good morning, Good morning, Charlotte. Was it? I can't remember. You didn't but. see it. We gotta catch the replay, or we gotta catch somebody. Gotta post Red's um thing because it was this morning at nine. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. she's just getting off set. It's 9 mm -hmm. 06. I doubt that. Maybe yeah. eight. Just got off set. Yeah, I just got off set. <laughs> hey, I'll see you guys on the set. <laughs> so we encourage you to share and make sure that you share particularly today because we have a special guest at the 9 30 at the 30 minute mark. Um and creating watch parties. Good day, Charlotte. Thank you, Red. Is she was on good day, Charlotte. That's awesome. Creating she was on there eight forty five. Creating watch parties is another great way to help us to get the message out, get everybody on here, and um, let's talk about it. Now, for me, Wednesday is also evaluation day. Hey, about something. Yeah. Um, there's a quote by a guy named Josh Billings, and it goes, the happiest time in a young man's life is when he's in red-hot pursuit of a dollar with a reasonable chance of overtaking it. 
Now, you don't have to say young man. You can say a young person. You can say any person. The happiest time in a person's life is when they're in red hot pursuit of a dollar with a reasonable chance of overtaking it. Now, I had a, 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 a dynamic last night happen to me. Looked at my TV guide on the um, screen. I had Duke playing um, uh, somebody at seven and UNC playing someone at nine. Both of them on ESPN. My evening is set, right? Wow, I could watch because college basketball games last right at two hours. That's it. <laughs> they done. Uh -huh. So, man, that's four hours laid out. Duke first, then Carolina. I'm good, right? I started watching the Duke game, but then the pool of the dollar was calling on me. You know, my laptop was like, look, Brian, we could get this business. No, we could do some stuff. And <clears throat> my psyche had a war and it was a slaughter. The desire to be productive was greater than my desire to watch college basketball. It happened to me just last night where it pulled me from the TV. Now, I, I can watch TV on my laptop, but I didn't want to anymore. I wanted to work. And I worked with joy and I worked into the night. You know, I'm operating on six hours of sleep a night. That's all I really need, you know. And even this morning, you know, once I woke up, uh, thanks, Tim. And once I woke up, uh, I wanted to get back to work. So I'm in the, even in the bathroom um, doing my morning constitutional. Impressive. Making notes about what I could do, writing notes. So that's how I'm at right now. This is a Wednesday, yes, but Lisa and I, we don't, I mean, we work all the time pretty much, you know, but. Wednesday's evaluation. But I'm going to tell you, it's nice to find something that can pull your energy. Oh, but you want to do that more than you want to do TV. Okay. Um, actually, Dennis Kimbrough definitely admits, um, I mean, attests to the fact that you simply can't afford to watch football, basketball, baseball, TV, period. Until you've made your first million, you simply can't afford to. There was another, I think it was like, um, uh, until you earn, and someone else told us that too, a similar thing. He says, until you're earning 20 grand a month, you can't afford television. $20,000 a month is what he felt. And it was someone that we both know and respect, and his name was just escaping me right now. But uh, he says, unless you're earning twenty thousand dollars a month, you cannot afford television. You felt like that's what it's—that's how much it's costing you. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, for the first good morning, Vivian. Thank you for joining us. For the first um, block, for the first two and a half years, we didn't have a um, we didn't have a a TV. Right. <laughs> No, we didn't. And I really believe you pine for those days when we don't have it. I do. I think you do, baby. I don't particularly care for television. You'll watch it. That's why I don't care to have one in the house. You know, um, there's a book of mine, one of my favorite books of all time is a book called Passion, Profit, and Power by a guy named Marshall Silver. And I saw it in my wife's bathroom. So now, I mean, she's looking at one of my favorite books, too, or at least she was looking at it anyway. But one of those books he was talking about, can you design your ideal day? What's going on with this here? Can you design your ideal I day? I understand what you mean. You can't see anybody's pictures or anything or what's going on? With this? I don't know what that has. What is that? Anyway, um, he says, map out your ideal day and as, in as much detail as you can for your ideal day. You know, just the exercise of writing it out, like what time would you wake up? Who would you be waking up with? What would you do when you got up? Mm -hmm. Where would you eat breakfast? You know, who would you eat breakfast with? You know, what would you go do then on your ideal day? And he wanted you to do it two ways. Your ideal day at work and your ideal day when you don't have to go to work. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and and just the exercise of mapping that out. My ideal day, probably wake up in a, a great hotel with Lisa, have breakfast with some great people, then go do my workshop and then have lunch with great people. And then we chill for the day or enjoy the city that we happen to be in at that time. That's an ideal day for me. That's a fun day for me. You know, that's me doing my thing with my baby, with meeting great people. That's how I want to live my life, you know, earn my living through talking to great people. That's what I do. So, but by mapping it out, it moves you towards it. You gotta move over towards okay. here. But here's the thing that he talks about. When and not just him, but other people too, efficiency expert, when people map out their ideal day or they map out their lives, they never budget time for television. 
no one's ideal day includes three hours of TV watching. I don't think so. No, it doesn't. No one's ideal day includes must see TV or 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 the Friday TV lineup or the Tuesday TV lineup. If you have if you were living your best life, it would not include television. Okay. Y'all seen that church cover that song? It kills me still to this day. I think we're frozen. Good morning. Good morning. No, good morning. Not. Hmm? Why do you say that? Because nobody's commenting. Ask him to comment. Okay. Yeah, I saw that church cover that song, um, um, Smile. I'm living my best life. I ain't going back and forth with you sinners. I'm living my best life. And this church is called New Birth is for the Winners. And then they yelled, Smile, Saints. Smile, Saints. Come on. <laughs> I think they were going to say, Good night. <laughs> they had to. That kills me. They had to. They had to. They definitely had to. Um, so you were going to say something about your contribution for the Empowerment Magazine. Yes, yes. I'm writing an article about um, winning days. Winning days. And it's a part of one, one of my books. Um, but the thing is, I think so much of the time people are imagine you're shooting an arrow bow and arrow mm -hmm. okay and it's that way but before you and they get you your, your arrow in your hand and your bow in the other hand and before you get allowed to shoot they say hold on and then they put a blindfold over you and then they spun you around 10 times and then they said okay now hit the target and i think that's how most people live their day trying to hit a target that they have no idea what direction the target's in, trying to hit a target that you can't see. Mm -hmm. If you can't see where the target is, you're not likely to hit it. And if you don't know what direction the target is in, you're not likely to hit it too. So my article on winning days is in my attempt to help people to, first off, have a target for their day and know what direction to point themselves in. Mm -hmm. That was a pretty cool illustration I just came up with. Pretty cool. You just, uh, <laughs> Melissa liked it. Melissa liked it. We're 15 minutes away from our guest. And we're excited about we're super that. Excited about our guest. I'm excited about this guest, too, because another one of our friends actually knows the guy, was in school with the guy, Joseph Bridgen. And um, oh, man, I wasn't supposed to say his name. And, um, <laughs> he told me what kind of guy he was in high school. <laughs> Do you have it? Yeah, stay married. Stay married. That's right. Cool. So we're looking forward to the guy who wrote the book, Stay Married. Okay. <laughs> so. so we're gonna invite James so he can come and check James out. James is invited. Whoop, whoop. Make sure that he comes and check his out. Check out his recommendation. Check out his recommendations. So we'll see. Absolutely. We got 15 minutes to our guess. So in addition to evaluating um, your week on a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. And let's talk about this. This is giving me a chance to flex my professional muscles, which I like to do on the show. Now, I consider Wednesday evaluation day because if you put yourself on a five day work week, uh, Wednesday's the middle day. And on this day, you could do this as often as you like, but on this day, ask yourself these two questions. These are things that people pay me to teach them. I'm about to give it to you. Two questions. These questions will always keep you getting right. Get your body back right. Get your mind back right. Question number one is, ask yourself this question today. What am I doing correctly? What am I doing the right way? Ask yourself that question. And I think it's a good question for self-reflection. What am I doing the right way? And I really want you to honestly find an answer to that question. And you don't even have to be doing it completely the right way, even kind of the right way. What am I doing the right way? You know, the kind of the right way matters, like the baby holding on to the edge of the coffee table, you know, wobbly and then falling towards the couch. You know, that's kind of the right way. It's not exactly right, but it's leading towards learning how to walk, you know. So you're doing it kind of the right way. Question number one is, what am I doing the right way? And you really should do it based for this current week. In your opinion, if you keep working the way you've been working for this week up to this point, is it going to help you to reach your targets? Are you moving towards where you want to go? Are you accomplishing anything? You know, one of the reasons why I know we've had a winning week is when we brought money in each day. 
That's one of the parameters that we use as entrepreneurs. If, do we bring in money that day? Okay, that matters. That matters. You don't, you don't go broke by making a profit. You know, the fact that you keep earning money matters. So question number one is, what am I doing the right way or even kind of the right way? And make, make it local, make it topical to this week. Make Monday, Tuesday, and to the point you ask yourself that question. Okay. And question number two is, and, and note how I'm wording this. If I had it to do over again, what would I have done differently? If I had this week to do over again, what would I have done differently? Maybe um, I was going to think first, my, maybe go to bed earlier and get up earlier. That might be one thing because I find my, I used to be a morning person, but I find my juice is flowing at night now. I think you're doing that to me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm doing it. Speaking of juices flowing this morning. Oh. <laughs> Where are my people? I don't see my people commenting this morning. I think the screen must be messed up or something. It's not. It's on it. It's on it. Nah, we don't go this long with nobody saying nothing. That never happens. Are y'all speaking to us this morning? We just not seeing it? Because that's what I think is going on. It's yeah. 9.19. No one... Here's Melissa. There we go. Feeling a perspective shift coming over me here, Brian. I love how these questions made me reflect on my actions this week. Feeling empowered to rule, in all caps, the rest of the week. Precious Pauline, I'm such a night owl myself. This night owl thing is new to me. But I found myself last night typing. I was going. My wife was like, it's time to go to bed, baby. I'm still working. I couldn't cut it off. <laughs> well, what were you typing? Typing um, responses and um, invitations to people to look at a video, a video that worked on me. A, friend, a lady reached out. <laughs> exactly, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, we are afraid to talk about your juices. My juices, Julie. Ju oh, it wasn't right. just me. <laughs> How to get this boy? Anyway, a lady reached out to me a few weeks ago and says, "Brian, she's launched the um, uh, she moved herself into the cannabis industry, and if she if she sent me a video, would I watch it? I had been thinking about it and studying it on it anyway. I've been studying on it for five months, so her timing was right. I said, sure, I'll watch it. Okay, precious part, I'm not, I am so not a morning person. My kids have grown me." Have grown me so, so much. much. Yep. Yeah, yep. <laughs> yep. Whether you are or not, they got to get going. <laughs> and Melissa is rolling and praying along with Julie. Our I'm show does kidding. not work if people don't participate. So thank you guys for raising your hand. It made me uncomfortable when nobody's saying nothing. Ugh, that's not our show. <laughs> Julie says she's not a morning person either, but here am I. All your fault. All our fault. All your fault. All your fault. All your fault. You did you get all your Christmas crap put away? And I wanted to hear other people's thoughts about um, Wednesday. Wednesday. And but also the concept of when you were thinking of your ideal day, do you ever even budget any time for television? And if that's the case, even just me telling, I probably told this thing plenty of times before. Even me telling it made me realize, you know, how much time can be better spent. You know, another thing I, I, I saw, um, there's a great network marketer. His name is uh, uh, Sims, something Sims, okay? Six foot six black guy. I don't know. Yeah. Good morning, Carmelita. Thank you for joining us. Carmelita, I wrote your name down, someone to reach out to today. Um, he said he had started making about 60 grand a month in his network marketing business, okay? You know, and he was like looking at the clothes in his closet. He was making 60 grand a month. You know, six foot six tall, so he's getting his suits custom made, and he was making six money. Six foot six, even if you don't have any money, you got to get them custom. Made. Still, if you don't have any money, if you six six, so but he had Mike Sims. Thank you, and Mike, you probably remember this video, James. Mike was talking about um, that he realized that he's having fun now, and that he had never really had fun before. He was talking about, you know, what I realized until I started making money like this. I've never really had fun. And and for some reason, that just did something to me. 
You know, it made it made me feel better because he was showing his um he had a he lived in a high rise condo. He wasn't in a house. He was in a condo, which I respect completely because houses include maintenance. Okay. <laughs> Melissa said there's an eternity in your minutes. Amen. There is. And Julie said, I only watch TV during night night or exercise time. I have no desire to sit down to watch. And for those of you who don't even want to watch the broadcast, you can tune into our podcast. And James Pence said, you got to get them custom at 532. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, w- I would think so, James. Yeah. James, your perspective and your jokes about, about height and perspective just kill me. They tickle me is what they do. Because uh, I'm not much taller than him. You no, know. yeah, I, you're not. I hate, and plus I used to be a big thigh guy. My thighs now are probably more normal size, I guess. You think? You know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know these questions. The, the, the way the way the pants, the way the pants. Uh, I don't know. The way the pants wear. How about oh that? my god! I don't <laughs> want to have this conversation. Baby, when did you get prudish? I'm not a prude. Y'all need little bitty suits at five three and five seven. Uh, little bitty pocket suits that they make out of remnants. Only <laughs> Everybody considers me a big man. I'm considered a big guy. I'm just not tall. You're not a big guy. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I remember the first time someone ever called me that. What? Big man. You know, I remember the instant because I had never been a big man before. I'd always been like medium guy or you know, like quick basketball player shape and i was y'all going, know i'm messing with you right my five three and five seven brothers i love y'all let me tell you this moment was monumental in my life i was going into a gas station store and there was a man coming out he did not know me i did not know him he just saw me coming in and he said what's up big man and i took a couple of stuff i said what's up I took off stuff. I'm like, big man. When did I get to be big man? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, James. He said, "Don't be asking about your thigh on air." <laughs> <laughs> I didn't understand why that was thrown off. Oh my God! I don't want to do it. Thank you, Carmelita. <laughs> With the adult television moves just too slow for me. I always feel like I could be doing something more profitable. And the news is depressing and aggravating. So I get it. Uh, Julie Brooks, let's talk thigh gap. My lack of one and the destruction of the inner pant leg because of it. That's what I was talking about. The destruction of the inner pant leg. I couldn't articulate it. Thank you, Julie. (laughs) Thank you, Julie Brooks. I've never had thigh gap ever, ever, ever. Right. You don't got thigh gap. You got thigh. Whatever, I think we're having too much conversation <laughs> about thighs and gaps and legs. Anyway, we got our guests coming in five minutes, and we're gonna behave. And actually, I think we got a company coming on. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm interested to how Joseph is going to be the adult in the room because he talks about stay married and he talks about relationships, and he's probably got some very structured ideas and concepts as a relationship. I like, I like. And and we don't. <laughs> no, about how people should be in relationships. Well, we don't want to be relationships coaches. No. We're like James and Yolanda or um uh yeah. Joseph yeah. or um what's the other ones? Uh, Martin Phyllis. The other ones who we know that are marriage educators, they hired us together. Mm-hmm. They drive mo- they ride motorcycles now. What's the names? Mm-hmm. I know who you're talking about. What's the name? Joan and Joan Mike. Mark. Mark. Joan and Mark, yep. So because you can't remember, you're going to fuss at me was to make fussing? me remember. Was that fussing? You know. I said I did know. You know. What's inside the name? You know. And you know, too. But I could, obviously, I could you, cut me. you need to cut off. So you so put me on the spot. So until when you I say I know, that tells me that no, you have that name. I know, but I don't know. You didn't say I didn't know. Ugh. James said he ain't no adult in the room either. <laughs> <laughs> We're looking forward to finding out. We got forward. three minutes, three minutes to this guy coming on here today. But back on that other point, that's a. I think that's a good point too. People ask Lisa if we would um, do marriage workshop or whatever or marriage coaching, and no, we don't want to because that's not. We don't consider that 
our area of expertise. We know how we interact. We know what works We're for us. about all of this. That's it. <laughs> and sometimes not so much. <laughs> we cry, though. I endeavor to be great at Le being Lisa's husband. That's my goal. I want to be a great husband for Lisa. And don't ever talk about your thigh meat on the show. <laughs> Should we put that on the list of rules that we have? Like the rules that oh, the Lord. rules on the refrigerator. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Lisa cannot <laughs> go outside. outside. <laughs> no outside for Lisa. Lisa, no outside. Lisa cannot <laughs> use my phone. <laughs> no phone for Lisa. No phone for oh he gets there he is. He done got his he he done got his hair. I'm gonna go change clothes, man. Cause I'm fly in the green. I, I gotta go put on a nicer shirt now. Dang. <laughs> Is that velvet? Y'all gonna see it in just a moment. We got we got Marriage. a minute and a half. We're going to bring him on. Absolutely. I'm Carmelita, excited about this guest. Carmelita said marriage counseling is so iffy relative to the individual, not cookie cutter. It's difficult to find a fit for us. We're just the Sims. I, I agree. But here's the thing. I do believe that marriage educators and marriage coaches can be helpful because I went through some of that before. I think they could be helpful, especially if they have strategies. Um, yes, that's no, that wasn't raw. That wasn't raw. That, that was, was um, um, that wasn't even delirious. That was before that was the 1982. That was when movie. Aunt Bunny came down the steps. Yes, that's before, <laughs> before delirious. Now that's the um, far. <laughs> yes, Uncle Gus. All, no, Uncle Gus is in delirious. He's got three of them, but this is the one in the black leather. Um, and that Murphy, baby. Raw was raw. Okay. So we love it. We love it. And um, we got a minute, y'all. Less than a minute. We're going to bring up the man. Oh, man. I'm excited about this guest. Oh, James is standing on it. He said, that was raw. Oh, that was raw. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got to recognize James put on his suit and come on the show and teach something. Yes, this guy here. <laughs> he's one of these guys that you see in the periphery. But you also always hear good things said about him. He's a guy that James Penn recommended to this show. I was so excited to find out him and I was already good. Uh, we were already Facebook friends and we had actually commented on a few things with each other. And then I found out that one of our good buddies here, Ron Pauling, went to school with this guy. So I got some insight on how he was back in high school, what kind of guy he was back in high school. I'm bringing him up. Which made me like him even more. Ooh. Mr. Joseph. Bridget! Yeah. The crowd goes wild. And the crowd goes wild. <laughs> What's up, man? What's going on? Good people, good people. Been sitting in the green room hyped, like ready to go. Let's get good, it. Good, good. <laughs> and we want you to use that right now because you heard what I said about you, but I'm going to yield you some time to introduce yourself the way you want to. All right. Well, I appreciate that. First of all, I want to thank you guys so much for this opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's amazing to be here, to be able to be on you guys' show. I'm excited. I, I love your energy. I love the vibe. And I want to jump right in. I want to let me please allow me to introduce myself with my gift. Is that OK? Yeah, um, yeah. Because, do your um, song, Lord. Jump, jump, Jumping straight into this uh, this concept. I love what you said. And what you said was amazing. You said we're not relationship experts. I'm just trying to be the best husband to my wife. And the irony of that statement is that's what makes you a relationship expert. So Ooh. let's jump right in to my <laughs> book. <laughs> let me jump right in. Because I'm like, um, my, my book, one of the first sections of my book is titled Why I Hate Relationship Panels. I'm getting ready to host a relationship panel on February 16th, uh, 2019. <laughs> And one of the first problems of my book says is why I hate relationship panels. Why do I hate them? Because on a relationship panel, wherever you go, whether it's Steve Harvey or whether it's Wendy Williams, where people are asking relationship questions, uh, how do I get a man to do X, Y, and Z? What should a first date be like? Or how should I get, how, why, why did this man cheat on me? Why this is that? And, and the, the challenge with that, guys, is uh -huh. you ask a very, very, very individualized and specific question as if it is generic and universal. Absolutely. The challenge with that is you have women saying, well, 
I don't need to teach no man how to love me. He should just know how to love me. I ain't going to raise no man. I'm not going to bring no man. In. You should just know how to do it. The challenge with that is it's, it's really ridiculous. It's a ridiculous yes. concept, but people don't know that because <laughs> you're the only one who knows what you want. What your wife wants is not what my wife wants. Right. And how I want to be pleased is not how you want to be pleased. So there is no right way for a husband to behave. There is no wrong way. The, I tell couples, I've been doing counseling. Listen, I've been doing relationship counseling, and marriage and counseling since I was 15. Older couples in my dad's church have been coming to me for relationship advice when I was a little kid. Like, I don't know what this gift that God placed in me has been in me for a while. I just really started doing it in this book, but I've been pastoring, you know, uh, counseling couples at my churches, you know, for a while. So I tell couples all the time, listen, you got to see what she needs. And she's got to see what you, and it's not, we don't think in terms of right and wrong. We think in terms of functional and dysfunctional. Why is that? Because everybody thinks they're right. Hold on. So, You're giving us a lot of meat to chew on. And I want to make sure we could digest it all. Okay. So much you said that I like, okay? <laughs> um, why I hate relationship panels. Uh, <laughs> now, you were kind of singing my song. I don't know if I hate them. I severely <laughs> dislike them. <laughs> Um, one thing I really dislike is articles in magazines right, right. about a hundred ways to please your husband or please right. your man and right. all those things and written by some woman. That right. drives me nuts. <laughs> okay. That drives me nuts. Not only is she a woman, she don't know your man. She, she don't, don't know, know your man. man. Right. right. So I wanted to um, give some folks here a chance to chew on that bone there, you know, being the best you can for the current mate that you have. You know, right. I do think I do think there's room, though, for people to learn strategies, though, right? Absolutely. Strat so here's the thing. the When you ask the question, um, why did Craig cheat on me? And okay. got a room full of 100 people. Obviously, we're not going to get anywhere with that. Wow. Ain't so none of them we Craig. We talk about right. We don't, I know Craig. So, and why Craig cheated on you is not the reason why Bobby cheated on you. Why right. Bobby cheated on you is not the reason why I said so. But when you talk about strategies... Strategies can only be really unpacked when I get into a one on one session with the couple and ask them the specifics of how they feel, what their characteristics are, and how their relationship works. Once I start, all I got to do is ask about two or three questions and I know what's going on. All I got to do is get them in the room for a couple of seconds and I'm saying, Oh, that's new. Did, did, are you looking? And I, I, if I had a nickel for every time I had to pause a session, and tell the husband to look at his wife, I'd be a rich man. Who wouldn't even be doing it? I'd be paying for y'all broadcast. Listen, I'd be wow. like, it's so many times like, listen, okay, pause. Uh, uh, Craig, look at your wife. No, T turn around, physically look at her. Now, do you, do you see her face right now? What are you getting from her? What is she giving you emotionally right now? Hey, she looks really angry. She looks upset. Did, did you know she felt this strongly about this issue? No. So obviously right now we're dealing with some chat because, because, mostly we get into ruts and we get into routines and we get into habits and we forget to actually pay attention to each other. Um, men are hunter gatherers. So a lot of times women are frustrated because they've been gathered. There's a certain energy that a man has when he's hunting and it's completely gone once you've been gathered. All right, Craig. And a lot getting, of people. You're getting into the raw <laughs> network now. You're getting into the raw <laughs> area now. Don't tell them that, man. You're going to mess up our game. Listen, listen. I'm giving away all no, the things. You know what's I'm interesting? Everything. I'm going to chime in on that because you know what's interesting <laughs> is that I think that my husband, because he is in sales and he's a sales coach, he is innately aware of that. Mm -hmm. And what he does is he endeavors to hunt me every day. There you go. There you go. There you go. You got it's a go. goal. You got yeah, it's a goal. But it does take some. Um, it takes some want to. Yeah. I think that's the trick. And, and when you was doing that um, example of Craig and look at your wife, look at your wife. I was um, almost embarrassed to tell you I was sympathizing with him because mm -hmm. I saw him in your office trying to protect himself. Right. Right. You know, he was like. I know what this is, and I've seen it before. So to protect mm -hmm. my psyche, I uh -huh. can't look. You know? oh, Am I being crazy? No, you're being absolutely on point. So, so here's the challenge. Oh, we going deep now. I'm having to charge these people watching for this. <laughs> listen, 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 we go, we going deep today. So, so here's the thing, women. It's it's the, the I use genders, but this is never a gender thing. There are a lot of things that we typically 
assigned to women, sometimes they're men. I sometimes I say I'm the chicken. You saying it's not gender specific here? It's not gender specific. A lot Uh-oh. of times the woman is the emotional aggressor and the man is more quiet. But in a lot of relationships, the man is the emotional aggressor and the woman detaches. So this is not okay. this is not a gender thing. In my relationship, I am the emotional aggressor. I am the counselor. I am the let's talk about it. No, right here in the moment. No, let's let's go. Let's no, 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 let's not wait. No, I need your passion. I need your energy. No, no, wait. Let's not wait till we calm down. Ooh, give it to me now. Give it to me raw. I want mm-hmm. it. I love you. I want all of you. Give it to me. And my wife is like, boy, if you don't go somewhere and sit down, right? Have, have a Coke and a smile. Just, 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 <laughs> just go over there and have your get your entire life. Like I can't deal with you right now. You're too much. And so I had to learn. That what the world celebrates, my energy, you feel it right now. My energy, my passion, the world celebrates that. But my wife is like, hold up, player, that's too much. <laughs> so we, we we got to bring that. Whoa, calm, calm down, my friend. Ooh, bring it down, bring it down. Do it. <laughs> you are doing the most. Do what you're doing the most. So we had to, we had to get that in We had to balance our energies. Had to, so one thing I'm gonna say about what you said though, um, I talk to women a lot, and I wanted to make sure the caveat so it's not just picking on women, but I talk to women a lot. They say, you know, my husband won't talk to me. So again, this is not gender specific. Let's just say my spouse won't talk to me. Okay. But when they get on the phone with their friends, they yap, yap, yap. yap, yap, yap when yap. they get around their boys and their girls, they yap, yap, yap. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. If you see that dynamic, that, that means that your spouse is not a non-talkative person. They're just not talking to you. So what that means, he- hear me now, you got to you got to be ready to open up. To, I'm to about to bring something to you now. I'm about to say something, but go ahead. You, you have taught them that opening up to you is not a safe space. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That is exactly my point. Yeah. I want people to get that. When you, um, my first marriage, we were got to the place where we didn't even like each other no more. Okay. Right. We didn't like each other. We weren't talking at all. But when one of my boys called me, I'm right. laughing right. Joking with my boy on the phone. And she's like, how can you laugh and go for mad. Uh-huh. Right. And she's mad about that. Every time one of your boys call, you get happy and hype on the phone. But you're not talking like that with me. Well, I like my boy. <laughs> right, right, right. So, so here's the visual. Here's the metaphor. Um, if every time I open up, I get stabbed, how long is it going to take for me Stand to it. learn don't open up. Yeah, so we've I'm talked going, about that. Yeah. We've talked right. about that. So I'm covering. This is what I'm doing. I'm covering my emotions. I'm covering my feelings. Watch this. And, and I say this to you. Uh, one of the sections of my book is um, the art of the art of arguing. The art okay. of arguing. And and I, I counseled a couple uh, that said um, they had been dating for about eight months, and they were doing premarital counseling, wanted me to marry them. And they said, I said, so one of my one of my many premarital questions is, okay, tell me about your last argument. Tell me about your last fight. How did that go? Um, and they said, we've never had an argument. Clutch the pearls. Wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What you, you never had an argument? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Whoa. What? You never had an argument? What? Wait, what you never? So I said, listen, you've never had an argument? Y'all been dating? How long? Been dating about eight months. We've never had a... Listen. Okay, so go home. I'm not going to marry you. Come back. Yeah. After, if you've never seen him angry, you're not ready to get married. Now, that's good counsel he's telling y'all right now. I've heard it said before by another bishop, actually. Don't marry someone unless you've had a good fight, a good scuffle. Why? Because you need to know how the other person fights, okay? You don't. You need to know if she's the slash and tires type or not. You need to know. Windows out your car. Or she's going to be the silent type and not talk to you. You need to know if you can deal with that person when they're mad at you. Actually, um, Lisa and I, we argue, but what we've learned is our arguments are always brief because we're both communicators. Right. And right. we both understand the concept of seek to understand before being hurt. understood. Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah, 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 I've yeah. been mad at her before, but it, I can't stay mad because she's a communicator. And so am I. And we can get to the heart of it. Right. And also, we assume both sides have to be at least partially right or there'd right. be no, no argument. You have Actually, to assume, we assume I'm right. Well, <laughs> Other than <laughs> other than the times when I'm right, right, and when right. I'm right, I typically have less to say. Girl, shut up. Sit down. <laughs> look, 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 look. So, so, Go saying, outside for Lisa. <laughs> you're, you're saying so much amazing stuff, and I wanted to say this two things really quickly. Um, when me and my wife first started dating, um, 
you know, I had talked to her and I said, you know, are you going to do the work to make this marriage, uh, to make this relationship work? We first wow. started dating. She was like, yeah. What a great question. We, we got, are you um, going to do the work? Are you going to do the work? <laughs> we got into this argument um, and I called her and she didn't answer the phone. I called again. She didn't answer the phone. I called her yeah, the third yeah. time. She picked up the phone. I said, nah, baby, I asked you if you were willing to do the work to make this relationship work. I know you don't feel like talking to me. I don't feel like talking to you right now. But I understand it's not wise for us to let this fester. Let's go ahead and talk about it. And if you need a space, if you need to say, okay, give me a couple of hours or let's table this until tomorrow, whatever we need to do, but let's talk about this now and make sure we have something in place. She was like, okay. I said, you told me you're going to do the work. Are you, are you going to do the work? She was like, yes, I'm going to do the work. All right, let's do this. Here's my thing. People don't understand. I talk about the art of arguing. People don't understand the difference between arguing and fighting. There is a difference between arguing and fighting. Yeah. Couples should argue. When you don't argue, Not when you don't argue, that means you don't respect the other person. <clears throat> Because two people with two different brains are never going to agree all the time. So if we I love that's two great things. Argue if you don't argue means you don't respect them enough to even put forth an argument. Exactly. Wow. So but that's I not the same thing as fighting. No, it's not. But I want to get this comment from James because I really liked it. He's James Penn says, argue till you're right. Meaning, argue till you, the couple, have gotten resolution. Love it. Not until you, the individual, is right, right. until you, the couple, has gotten right, right. with one right. another. And I think that that's really yeah. awesome. Jo Joseph, we got you for another 11 minutes, <laughs> but we're not going to let you get out of here without talking about some of the stuff I learned from Brother Rondell Pauling. Okay, okay. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Let's go with it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, We've already brought up James's height and my height. He's 5'3", I'm 5'7". How tall are you? I am 6'2 and some change. 6'2 and some change. Okay. Rondell made me think you was taller than that. Okay. <laughs> Little. Yeah. He made me, he was a tall guy <laughs> who was into his music. You know, he wasn't so much into sports. He was more into music. No, I played <laughs> football from the eighth grade through the 10th grade because my father is a football hero and he literally guilted me onto the field. Okay. Like, I like lifting because, lift, you know, I like lifting, you know what I'm saying? But, yes. uh, because I, I enjoy how it makes my body look, and that's a part of my brand. But music, music is my passion. Music is my You told heart. me that was your thing in high school, music. Always been what I mean. I've been singing. I've been singing. That's how my mother used to keep us good in the car. Me and my sister would harmonize. We would sing up and down the road. Our two-hour, three-hour trips, we would sing. That's how it would keep us doing well. <laughs> I got some good got comments, some comments. I'm gonna grab here because I think Precious really hit it. She said, I got that last year <laughs> after 16 fun. years of marriage that I was holding my hubby hostage to the cookies and mm -hmm. didn't realize he was holding back his total truth because he wanted cookies more than he wanted to hear more than he wanted me to hear him out. So I finally understood his jealousy for my freedom of speech and I gave him back his. Wow. wow. Now we have wow. to do his joy. Lisa and I wow. Wow. That we was good them. right there. Yeah, we were there. We with were them. there when they had that res that revelation. Mm -hmm. We happened to be around them when um because and I saw Precious's face. We happened to just happen to be in the room because he's like, "Look, I know if I say certain things, she's gonna withhold the cookie." Yeah, the cookie and I don't want the cookie. Right. 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 That meant that he couldn't really say everything, you know. Right. So, but she freed him up. Look, baby, I'm not gonna withhold the cookie. You can right. say everything, okay? Now James Penn said, "Man, you can't count change over six feet. Ain't no change after six feet." Uh, how did that hater? What flavor is that haterade, James? What is that, is that red <laughs> haterade? Is that blue? What flavor is that? Is that blue ice? Ice glacier? What flavor is that haterade? Oh, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Make sure you get them electrolytes in that haterade. <laughs> so thank you for clearing that up about you playing football and lifting in high school. But he also told me that you was a little bit nerdy in high school. Oh, he lied. He, he completely <laughs> lied. If he indicated anything less than extreme supernatural superhero nerdy. Then he lied. Like, listen, superhero I, nerdy. Superhero nerdy. I never like, heard of superhero nerdy. I was, I had a nerdy superpower. Like, listen, okay. I did not come into, and some would argue that I, I have never come into my swag, but I didn't come into my, my acceptance of who I was for a very long time. Like, a lot of, I grew up being picked on as a child. I grew up with a lot of, you know, being ostracized out of groups, never being able to hang with the cool kids. So I grew up, but the blessing of that is, um, I didn't grow up smoking, didn't grow up drinking, didn't grow up having sex because 
you have to have peers to have peer pressure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So there was kind of this unintended benefit because everybody put me off. It was like, oh, something about this guy. I don't know. I don't like this guy. And it was really me trying to walk in two different directions. The call of God was on my life, but I was trying to blend in with the world. Yeah, mm-hmm. it doesn't work. And it doesn't work. So it took it me about to college. Frustrating to try to make it work. Well, it doesn't. And no. to go off on a whole nother tangent, the other thing is there, there are people that can be attracted to your call, but don't respect the calling. And they bring a whole nother dimension into your life. Right. You're the bright, shiny thing that's anointed, but they don't right. understand what that means. That was one of the things that I dealt with. All right. We got seven more minutes. I'm going to give you a chance to be a professional again. Um, Cause another thing, Come on, one more time. <laughs> uh, we have a friend of ours. I'm not going to say her name, but, but she's not married now. And she told us that when she was married every single night, her husband watched the game every single night of the year. Every night he watched some game. It was basketball, football, baseball, every night, okay? He stayed away from her watching the game every single night of that relationship, and that relationship ended, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes um, I feel guilty working late, and it's been happening lately, you know, because I'm excited, I'm doing my thing, but my wife is ready. So I'm like, okay, do I need to stop this and go be with her right now? Or uh, because she has told me, like sometimes an inspiration comes at four or five in the morning or she's told me when that happens, get out of bed and go work, go do your thing. She's, she's admonished me to do this. But right. sometimes I still feel guilty with that other friend and had, how she felt about her husband always doing something distracting from her and then me working late. And uh, sometimes I question that move. Did you hear anything there that you can jump in on? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you for, for being open and honest and asking that question. A um, couple of things. Number one, uh, with the with your friend, uh, the, the guy who watched a game every single night has nothing to do with the game. Oh, the challenge is there in their relationship. That was an escape mechanism. Um, that was him because ain't, there isn't a game on every night. <laughs> there, there isn't a game on every night. Well, you got to switch up sports to make that happen. Sport, there, you got to be creative to make you that happen. You got to be creative. That's actually, <laughs> even for a sports fanatic, that's abnormal. Even for a sports fanatic, that's abnormal. So you have to go out of your way to do that. So he's trying yeah. to go out of his way to avoid other things. So they had issues in their relationship. Uh, and if I talk to her, and she's welcome to get at me, you know, inbox me, um, there will be some challenges that she might, there are always things you can learn from a failed relationship. So you want to make mm. sure that you don't take bad behaviors uh, and bitterness and brokenness into your next relationship. Uh, but the other thing, to, to address your point, um, you have, I'm just looking at you guys communicate, you have a great relationship with your wife. You have a great relationship with your wife. I think so. Energy doesn't lie. You guys are not afraid to disagree on camera. You have a great, <laughs> you have a great relationship. You have, listen, listen, people would That's interesting. for what you have. You have a great relationship with your wife. So the, the answer to your question is, you this right here, all your answers you need is in this right here. Baby, how do you feel? This is not an objective either this or, or that. <clears throat> Baby, go do your work. Go do your work. 29 out of 30 days. That 30th day, she may say, hey, I'm feeling a little neglected. Come on, see me. So that one day, you give her that quality time, and she's good. Because yeah. there may be time. So it, it's not really a thing where you can say this one answer. It's how is she feeling right now? It's your job as the husband to stay in tune. If you're feeling, to mm-hmm. stay in tune, say, hey, you know, and listen, you ain't got to be Houdini. You ain't got to be a mind reader. Hey, baby, uh, I'm about to go hit this work. I'm, I'm really feeling the vibe. You good? Yeah, baby, good. Go ahead. We Gucci. Now, again, some women, not your wife, not your wife, but some women would lie. There's a section in my book, whole section in my book about lying. Whole section Ooh, in my book about lying. You're y'all gotta get this book. Yourself. Listen, this book is crazy. Listen, when I tell y'all this book is crazy, I have summed up like 20 years of counseling experience into an introduction. Because this is book one. This is book okay. one. But I, I, I say that to say, listen. If she's going to tell you the truth, ask your wife. If you know your wife is prone to lie and she, she's trying to please you and not tell you the truth, then you got to go into the Holy Ghost. You got to pray and be discerning <laughs> and, and, and try to try to allow the Holy Ghost to tell you, no, she's not cool. But a, a lot of this, guys, a lot of times, I'm going to leave you with this nugget. A lot of times the question, the question is asked, are you happily married? And it's a trick question. It's a trick question okay. because you can't be happy in your marriage if you're not happy with your life. 
Love it. We got to get some of these comments caught up here. <clears throat> um, go ahead, James. I'm going to grab James. Sounds like he had internal issues as well. Sometimes we think things are relationship issues when they're internal issues that have nothing to do with the spouse. Amen. That's what I um, said. That's what I said. <laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> and Princess said, while well, me and Randell must be on fire because our live disagreements are voice loose. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Now I want to make sure that people do know how to both connect with you and, and, get your book, and yeah. to get your book. They can go to Joseph Pritch com and on february the 16th you have a seminar coming up i love the title it's relationship seminar happily ever after the truth about marriage and relationship and the happily ever after has a question mark after it right. now we got you for two more minutes where can they get tickets for this seminar and where is it being held and whatever else you want to say mm -hmm. please. listen Two minutes. Um, it's gonna be 200 Regan Street. Listen, just get at me. Inbox me. What city? Okay. It's in Greensboro, North Carolina. Just okay. get at me. You can't buy the book on josephbridgen.com, but you can pre-order it if you inbox me today. I'll put a link uh, in okay. this video so people can can pre-order today. But I do want to get to this thing about arguing. We didn't get a chance to get to it. There's okay. a difference between arguing and fighting, and I want people to understand arguing is where we're going back and forth. We're not diminishing the passion, but we're there are rules to argue. There, there's there's things called low blows and things we don't do. Fight. Right, absolutely. A couple should never fight. Couples should frequently argue. Couples should never fight. Wow. A fight is when I'm talking about your mama, talking about that's why your penis is small. That's why you could never satisfy me anyway. That's why Craig was better than you. That's why I, I don't like your mama. I don't like your kid. That's why uh, my baby. That's a fight. That's, that's a fight. That's a fight. Couples yeah. should never fight. And again, I, I talk about this nuanced concept in my book. Couples should argue. They should be able to go to the box. But the last piece is they should go to the resolution. The last piece is. When you get married, one of the truths of marriage is that every argument doesn't have a resolution. Mm -hmm. Every argument does not have wow. a resolution. Absolutely. That's a good one. So, sometimes we have Because I know men, we want to find the resolution. I know I would. Fix it. We want to fix it. But sometimes yeah. the yeah, answer wanna, is, I, I want to respect fix it. you and your authenticity enough to allow you to be you. I ain't going to never like that dress. I'm going to think it's ugly to the day I die. And you're going to wear it, and we're going to go out on a date, and I'm going to smile at you and take pictures. Or you're going to shave off all your hair on your face. And I'm going to have to wake up to a stranger and all kinds of foolishness. And we just going to let it ride, man, because I, I, I'm not your father. I'm your husband. I'm not your mother. I'm your wife. So we can express our opinions, but at the end of the day, we're talking to another grown individual. So um, there has to be a level of uh, understanding and trust that goes to a healthy relationship. Joseph, you have been amazing today. Um, if you can hang out with us just for a little bit, um, okay. we're going to go put Lisa and I big on the screen, but I want to talk to you when the show's over. The show ends in five minutes, okay? Okay, I'll be here. Can you, can you be around? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Wow. Did Joseph Pringen bring it or not, y'all? Did he bring it? He was an expert. He was succinct. Mm. He was able to make his points, and he did it with style and personality. And don't I enjoyed him absolutely. And don't forget, you can inbox him directly uh, on Facebook. Order pre-order his book. Oh, it's okay. We got enough time to get through the power. It's not down here, baby. It's four minutes. Relax. It's not four minutes and relax. Uh -huh. her, her whole screen is dim because she didn't plug it in. And all you gotta do is plug in the power. You could use my cord right here. Oh, anyway, see, see what I'm saying? <laughs> this is me being fussy, um, cause all you gotta do is plug it in. Um, yes, it was a great show, very engaging. I appreciate this very much, James. You brought it today too. Now, James is another uh, marriage educator and counselor. I'm not counselor. I think he goes by educators. Already pre-ordered mine, Marriage by Design, James Penn, James and Yolanda Penn. Uh, they put on an event that Lisa and I went to, a comedy slash music slash uh, marriage counseling um, interspersed within it. And I thought it was very well done. It was very well done, James. We enjoyed it. They had a headliner, um, Kev on stage was Kev there. on stage, absolutely. I am excited. James already pre-ordered his book. And it is called Stay Married, and we're excited. Dorothea says, great energy, great info, full of wisdom for relationships. Amen. Yeah, it was a great show. I enjoyed him very much. But I knew I would. And we got another guest next week, don't we? Um, yes, we do have another Sam guest. Walker 
Sir Mark Adu, no? Yes, we have two guests next week, actually Tuesday and Wednesday. Oh, we God. have uh, Lady Borrero from London bringing her book from forty from, from 52nd Street. And, um, from London, England. That's right, she's gonna be on with us from London, England. And then on Wednesday, Sir Mark Adu, the uh, um, economic evangelist is going to be on- Economic, fitness, entrepreneurial. You're gonna love him. You talk about we got energy. He got way more energy than we do. Okay. <laughs> but I have enjoyed our show. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all of you guys who chose to participate in the show with us. Come back today at noon. That's right. Today at noon. We've done it three times already. This yep. is gonna be our fourth edition. The fourth episode of, of Money, Money Matters. Matters with a millionaire money maker, with Mr. Alvin Curry. Money matters. He has been bringing, he's brought it three Wednesdays in a row at noon. You can come right here on the Empowerment Duo page for Money Matters Wednesday at noon with Mr. Alvin Curry. Absolutely. And we're excited to bring you uh, this type of show. We really believe that we can get a lot done when we have fun intentionally mm -hmm. about business. That's my queen sister from London. That's right, Precious. Yeah, we, we, she's been a regular on our show, too, so over the years. Think about that, baby. This show has been going since October of 2016, and we're into 2019 now. We're coming up on three years of doing this show Monday through Friday. And in these, in these two years that we've done this show, so two years plus that we've done this show, we've only missed a handful of days, I think. For holidays and and or traveling stuff like that, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But it's because we want to bring forth this sort of broadcasting once again for us by us, sponsored by the Empowerment Magazine. I'm excited about being able to bring the new authors to you, new mm -hmm. writers to you, people that want to be writers but are not necessarily ready to write a book yet. They're sharing insights into their stories. We've got a lot of amazing stories coming up. We've got some entrepreneurs sharing about their gift. And it's just gonna be an interesting way to capture the voices so that hopefully if you have not yet found your voice, your own voice, and this was something that I really believe in my heart, that sometimes you've got to hear your voice in someone else so that you can recognize your uh, voice. I was just going to say, but also you'd be introduced to thought leaders that maybe you have heard of and never heard of before. So the Arm Palmer Circle Magazine. I am Lisa Santiago McNeil. I am Brian Keith McNeil. And this has been Let's Talk About It on ESP TV 7 on the SIBN Network, iHeart, iTunes, and right here on Facebook Live. And remember that your life is not a scrimmage or a practice game. There's no martyrs hall of fame. Time is peace that takes its toll. And for all of us, every day really is the Super Bowl. So God bless you and go forward and live your Super Bowl life today. And remember that you are blessed by the blessor to be a blessing. Permission to be amazing is granted. Go have sex. <laughs>